I was born in 1922, and then I had a father and a brother who believed strongly in technology, that the world was going to be remade. And I was an enthusiast for this, too. I remember one time that I expected uh, that by the time I was 30, that Popular Mechanics magazine would have a color photograph of God on its cover. <laughs> Science would have cornered God and, and got him to agree to oppose and, and to answer any questions they might still have. And uh, I was a great believer in truth, scientific truth, and then as I wrote once, then truth was dropped on Hiroshima. History is a nightmare from which I am trying to awaken. Even from the most benevolent point of view, it's really kind of a gory spectacle. It was that way uh, right out of the gate. From the moment that there's been people, uh, people have been clobbering each other. Violence is essentially the form of the quest for identity. Because they don't sing the same songs, and they don't worship the same gods, and they don't have the same flags. And I maintain that our own society suffers from an, a, a failure to adequately model and reflect the true nature of human beings. Human beings had to, back in the day, come up with some way to manage the otherwise potentially overwhelming terror that's engendered by the uniquely human awareness of death. Awareness of death. Awareness of death. Human beings quite ingeniously, although unconsciously, confronted that issue and solved that existential dilemma through the construction and maintenance of what anthropologists call culture. Culture, 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 culture. And this is pretty standard anthropological fare. Culture, 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 culture consists uh, of humanly constructed beliefs about the nature of reality that are shared by individuals in a group. Culture is an operating system. That's all it is. The primary function of those beliefs is to minimize or eliminate the otherwise paralyzing anxiety that the awareness of death, the awareness of death, the awareness of death would death. impose upon us. Well, it may already have occurred to you that uh, ideas hijack our brains. Culture, 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 culture. Humanly constructed beliefs about the nature of reality that are shared by individuals in a group in order to reduce the anxiety that's instigated by the awareness of death. The awareness of death, the awareness of death. Humanly constructed beliefs about the nature of reality that are shared by individuals in a group in order to reduce the anxiety that's instigated by the awareness of death. Awareness of death. Awareness of death. Ideas that replicate by passing from brain to brain. The idea of replicating ideas. In order to reduce the anxiety that's instigated by the awareness of death. Awareness of death, awareness of death. Like how does culture, culture, culture do that for us? Does it by providing meaning and significance. Meaning and significance. You need to believe that the world around you has meaning. Meaning, meaning, meaning. And the way that culture, culture, culture does that for us is by just giving us a sense that we live in the universe uh, that is somewhat worldly, somewhat stable, and somewhat predictable. And how does it do that for us? Well, every culture that we're aware of has an account of the origin of the universe. Every culture that we're aware of has a prescription for how you're supposed to behave. While you're here, every culture that we're aware of has some promise of immortality either literally or symbolically uh, to people who behave in accordance with cultural, 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 culturally derived standards. Ideas hijack our brains. All of us in our quiet and honest moments, we want to think that we're here for something valuable, something of transcendent significance. And the way that culture, 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 culture helps us acquire a sense of, of value and significance is by providing, and this is Sociology 101, through the provision of social roles, 
uh, with associated standards of conduct or the provision of social roles uh, with associated standards of conduct. And if you either satisfy or exceed those standards, you, you get, get to, to feel, feel like you're a person of value, value in a world, world of meaning. meaning. And when you feel that way, that's what self-esteem is. That's what self-esteem is. That's what self-esteem is. There are a lot of ideas to die for. Freedom, justice, truth, communism. Many people have laid down their lives for communism, and many have laid down their lives for capitalism, and many for Catholicism, and many for this. These are just a few of the ideas that are to die for. They're infectious. Did that make sense? I'm going to say that one more time, because that's as close as I have to a technical thought this afternoon. So let me just say it again. If, if your, your beliefs, beliefs about, about the nature of reality serve a death-denying function, if your beliefs about the nature of reality serve a death-denying function, then when you run into somebody who's different, then when you run into somebody who's different, you have a problem whether you're aware of it or not. You have a problem whether you're aware of it or not. Because if you accept the validity of someone else's beliefs, you necessarily erode the confidence with which you can uphold your own. And once that happens, you expose yourself to the very anxiety that those beliefs were designed to erase. Right, that's one problem. Then there's another problem that's even kind of scarier. Richard Dawkins invented the term memes. Memes are like viruses. That's what Richard said back in 93. There's always going to be some residual death anxiety. Residual death anxiety. There's always going to be some residual death anxiety. And what we do psychodynamically is we repress that anxiety. Repress that anxiety. And then we project it, project it, project it on to other, other individuals, individuals, either inside or outside of the culture who we declare the all-encompassing repositories of evil, the eradication of which would make life on earth as we have it be in heaven. What, how can a, how can, what's a meme made of? That is, there's something about it that tends to make it replicate better than the competition does. Even if there weren't different people around to cause problems, even if there weren't different people around to cause problems, we would create those differences by Taking death anxiety, death anxiety, death anxiety, and projecting it on uh, to people in our surroundings. Projecting it on to people in our surroundings. What's a meme made of? What are bits made of? Not silicon. They're made of information. And that's what a meme is, is an information packet. The first thing that you do when you run into people, people who are different, different is you derogate, derogate or you belittle. belittle, 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 belittle. At the same time that we do that, uh, we try to get those folks to dispose of their ridiculous ideas and to adopt ours instead. Now, and political and religious proselytizing comes to mind here. What's a word made of? Sometimes when people say, do memes exist? I say, well, do words exist? Finally, if that doesn't work, just kill those bastards, thus proving uh, that uh, we're superior after all. My God is better than your God. And, and we will kick your ass to prove it. Violence is essentially the form of the quest for identity. Violence is essentially the form of the quest for identity. operating system by dumping obsolete cultural subroutines. They are simply taking up disk space. They are not advancing uh, you in any way whatsoever. If we want to understand a humankind's long-term inability to get along with people who are different, we need to accept the possibility uh, that some of it comes from a fundamental inability 
to tolerate but those who do not share our death-denying beliefs about reality.